championships. I know you're a competitor. This was not your year. They have already, the, the, most of them have already admitted this. This just wasn't their year. But you, you have to know that you guys can come back. But their main priority is KD and and Clay. Uh, I think Looney is probably a secondary importance for them. Uh, KD said, oh, uh, ABM says, KD will still opt out. Teams will pay him. Get to security as no one comes back. The same from an Achilles injury. And that's that's a very good argument right there. I think he's gonna I think he's gonna opt in because then I, I don't know I don't know if KD KD is a, is an exceptional player and I don't know if him having that type of injury is going to possibly derail him from not coming back. If not even better, Kesey says so. It looks like Mark's three point is better than Draymond and Green saved them last night with all his threes. It really neither one of them should be shooting them, but every now and then it's needed, says Kesey. Good points right there. Kesey bringing in some basketball knowledge. And let me let me go back to Boogie. Boogie kind of had it going early. I think he had a good uh, 12 points or so early on. Kyle Lowry had 12 points. Looney was giving you some good minutes. Green throwing alley-oops to Iguodala. It, it was looking like Warriors basketball. It was looking like they were about to win this game. Ibaka with double figures. Uh, guess who getting in foul trouble? Lowry with three fouls. He ended up having four. Eventually, I think he ended up having five. Um, Steph had three fouls. Going into the fourth quarter, I was like, this fourth quarter... Is going to be fire. And then, dun, 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 the news came out that Clay is not returning. Walking away on crutches. That is never, ever a good thing. He was back there doing jumping jacks, doing everything possibly he could to get in. They made the right decision. They were not going to let him play, period. With the KD situation, the way that just happened, there would have been no way they were going to let him play. No way. And then at the end of the game, Steph Curry would have, not wide open, not the best look in the world, but it was a good look. And with that good look, the majority of the time, this is a guy that drains threes for a living. Arguably the best shooter in the NBA, in the game, period. Couldn't make the three. Like I said, it wasn't the easiest shot. It wasn't the hardest shot. But for him, he does that on the daily. And you have to make the argument. He he has not been able to make the big shot in big games. Now, after he misses that shot, you have DeMarcus Cousins almost close to getting a rebound. Then... You have everybody diving after the ball. And what does every single person, not every single person, but I would say three people, shout out to DJ Knox in the building, they try to call a timeout. Well, guess what? You didn't have any more timeouts. They did a Chris Webber in the NBA Finals. But at the end of the day, what, how much of that really would have helped? You would have had .9 seconds, which means you would have had to throw an alley or a, a Derek Fisher-type pass-and-shoot situation. Cool says, says, so the game five shot by Curry wasn't big. Okay, you're right about that. That shot was big. But if you go back and we look at playoff history, there is a limited amount of of Curry threes or shots that he has made to win games. Now that game five, I got I got to agree with you. That was a big shot. And the the only best option they would have had would have been to give the ball to to Boogie because he was the only one that that looked remotely open. 
But Draymond was was there was players all over him. I don't really know if he would have been able to get a pass out of there anyway. But that again goes to tell you that the Warriors were still in the game despite everything that they've went through and experienced. They were still in the game. But being in the game and winning the game, as we all know, is two different things. Last game in the Oracle, not the best of situations to lose. And this was just not their this was not their year. This was not their year. And Cool Cell pulling out the hat. Game 7 versus OKC in 2016. <laughs> I don't even remember that, to be honest. But if he had a game with a shot, he did. But what have you, the 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 old saying is, what have you done for me lately? And that's what people are going to remember. Curry had a great run in the finals, over 30 points, says Courtney. I agree with that 100%. They'll come back. They'll come back. This is—I don't think this is the end of the era. Now, next year is going to be completely different, though, because even if KD opts in, he's probably not going to play. Maybe he comes back in the playoffs, kind of like what Boogie did. On the other flip side of that, with a torn ACL, at this point in time in the year, Clay is probably going to be done. Probably will not play next year. So you're looking at a team without KD. Without Clay, you have Draymond, Steph, Looney. You're gonna have people coming out of the woodworks though that will sign with them. So don't don't get that don't get that twisted. You're gonna have a lot of people that's gonna want to come over to the Warriors. You're also gonna see, especially if Kawhi stays, who would maybe want to go to Toronto. Another interesting part: Van Fleet, the unsigned guy who played for Wichita State, could have been, should have been drafted, because I was that same year Wichita State, I believe, went to the Final Four. He's proving what he brings to the table. Nick Nurse is the first coach ever to win a championship, or to coach a championship in the G League and the NBA. Still a top five playoff seed Golden State. Yeah, true. True. I agree with that. I'm telling you, man, every week of of free agency or that first week of free agency is going to be must watch TV. Keep your phones handy. Keep your tablets handy because you will miss something because it's about to go down. And if the Lakers somehow, some way don't get anybody, I hate to throw this in here, but if the Lakers somehow, some way don't get anybody, Lakers fans got shed more tears. More tears than they've already shed already. All right, so let's move around to some NBA news. Uh, I mentioned this earlier. Kyrie supposedly already a shoe in to sign with the with Brooklyn. I don't know if that's true. I never heard Kate Kyrie say that. Kyrie's also leaving his agent parting ways with him and linking up with Rock Nation. Rock Nation getting some some real quality guys. 80s focus is on the Lakers and Knicks as preferred destinations. If if the Lakers don't make this deal happen, they can probably kiss their playoff chances goodbye. With this roster that they currently have right now. And then the story coming out that if he gets traded to the Celtics, if he gets traded to the Celtics, he only he will only be there one year. His agent has already said that, Rich Paul. Uh, shout out to LeBron keeping it in the family. Putting family on. Rich Paul and LeBron with the agency. Also, this came out right after the game. Right after the game. I'm thinking, how did... How did this news get out so quick? They're like handing over the trophy to Masai Ujiri, and the story comes out. He is expected to be offered $10 million annually to run the Wizards. And not only to run the Wizards, but also he, to give him a ownership stake. That's how, much, that's how much the Wizards want him to run the organization. I think you should turn it down 
immediately. I don't know if you want that. I don't know if you want that mess. You got, you're going to have to make some trades. You're going to be starting from scratch. Do you want to do that? I don't know how much he's getting paid now. But I'm pretty sure the Raptors would do everything they can to try to match that offer. One of your predictions, where do you think these guys will go? Uh, Kyrie, Kawhi, Kimba, Jimmy Butler, and AD. Kyrie, I think he is going to Brooklyn. Kawhi, I think he's staying in Toronto. I think Kimba's staying in Charlotte because he's already kind of mentioned that. Man, I forgot about Jimmy Butler. Man, I forgot about that. I don't even... I don't know about that one. I think to the highest bidder, so whoever that may be. 80, I got him going to the Lakers. Do the NBA Finals not matter or did I miss the show? <laughs> I'm about to get to that. I'm about to get to that. I'm going down my list. And with you bringing that up, the St. Louis Blues win their first final or their first Stanley Cup in franchise's 52-year history. Beating the Boston Bruins. Okay, first of all, I could not stand Boston getting another championship. Second of all, the St. Louis Blues beat my Dallas Stars. So I was rooting for them. At least I'm rooting for the team that beat my team and not Boston, who has a... They probably have a storage closet full of trophies. Ryan O'Reilly took home the Conn Smythe Trophy as a playoff MVP following their win. I'm happy. I'm happy for St. Louis, them losing the football team, and then uh, coming back and winning their, their next championship being in hockey. So shout out to everybody. St. Louis Blues getting the job done. A fan earns $100,000 on a $400 bet after the Blues win the championship. That guy's got to be beyond excited, beyond happy winning $100,000. A great way to spend Your weekend, great way to put some money on something and win. So first Stanley Cup in franchise's 52-year history, beating one of the all-time greatest franchises in hockey, the Boston Bruins. So big ups and shout out to them. Congratulations. So I wanted to also touch on some baseball topics here as we're going throughout the show. Tune into the BS3 Sports Show this Friday. Also, let me put this in. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. I won't be talking to you guys on Sunday. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. I appreciate uh, everything that that fathers do. I appreciate my dad who not only Uh, Taught me how to be a good husband, a good father, and and a good man, but also he led by example. So if he is tuning in or if he's not tuning in, uh, much love, Pops. I'll definitely be talking to you on Sunday. All right, so interesting story that came out from this week. Interesting story that came out from this week. David Ortiz gets shot in the Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic has been in the news a lot lately with people from the U.S. going over there, either getting murdered, getting kidnapped. Um, So newsflash, don't go to the Dominican Republic. But he was actually targeted Ortiz, 43 years old, retired Boston Red Sox. We all know that. Was in the Dominican Republic. Somebody put a hit out on him for less than $8,000. Now, it was a larger amount when you go with with the pesos that are in Dominican Republic. 
but for less than